Hey, House on the Rock kids, we want to remind you, if you're watching us on Facebook, if you're watching us on Instagram, that's great. But you can also go to the House on the Rock YouTube channel. Here's the link. And when you do, make sure that you hit like, subscribe, and the bell notification. So that way, every time a new video comes out, each week when this video comes out, you'll be automatically notified. So that way you can tune in. I'm glad that you're watching this week. Make sure that you go through, there's a lot of other resources on our YouTube channel that you can use every single day when you're having your quiet time with God. And that's what we're doing right now. We're talking about God's emergency numbers. And these are scriptures that are gonna help you if you're battling depression. God has scriptures that are gonna help you. If you have fear, anxiety, worry, God has scriptures that are gonna help you stand every time you're in a battle. You need God's word to help you stand, okay? So let's go to John chapter 14, verses one through four. Make sure you're using your Bible. Make sure that every time you hear a message from the Bible, that you actually have the Bible in front of you and you're actually reading it and that you go back, read the whole chapter. Read the chapter before, read the chapter after. Okay, but go with me, with me to John chapter 14, verse 1. And I remember as a kid thinking, this life, God has made us such an incredible design, such an incredible um, universe that we live in. This is not an accident. I kept thinking every time I'd hear evolution and all this other stuff and, and that this was an accidental thing that we evolved over time that just did not make any sense to me and so I kept thinking we have this short little life we have this perfect place called earth that is designed specifically for our type of life that's a designer why would the designer design something that would only live a very finite, a very small amount of time? 50, 60, 70, 80 years is not a whole lot of time in the grand scheme of eternity. Did he really want me just to live a little short time? Wouldn't he have designed something better that would live beyond this life? And that's in fact what the Bible is promising us that one, one way or the other, whether you're a believer or whether you're a non-believer, you're going to live for etern <clears throat> eternity somewhere. But are you going to be with your Heavenly Father? How could I know that for sure? How could I be assured that putting my faith in God was going to lead to an eternity with my Father in Heaven? And we can go right to a scripture like John chapter 14, verse 1, and hear Jesus' own promises. It says, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, you may be also. And where I go, you know, and the way you know. Jesus is making certain arguments about how we can be assured that everything he's saying is true, but you don't make that argument unless there's proof. Okay, so number one, we need to realize believing in God is not the same thing as believing that there's a town called Chicken, Alaska. Okay, I looked up funny names for cities, and this is one that popped up, and I thought, that's really funny, Chicken. Why would anybody call their town Chicken? So I looked it up, and the miners that settled there found that there was all kinds of these birds called ptarmigans, which kind of look like chickens. And so they called it Chicken Alaska. What's even funnier is that my wife Sarah actually knows where that town is and visited there. 
And so I thought, that's hilarious. I've got to use the name Chicken. So believing in God is not the same thing as believing that there's a community called Chicken Alaska or that knowing that Sarah has been to that community doesn't make that community any more real to you. Believing in God means that you have been persuaded that every promise that God's made, God makes is true and that you're going to surrender your will, you're going to surrender your life, all your hopes, dreams, desires, you're going to place them in God's hands. And you're going to trust God to guide you through this life, that His plan, His purpose, His intent for making you is better than your own. That His promises are worth trusting in, believing in, following. That His ways are better than our own opinion or dreams or viewpoint. I've chosen to put my life in His hands. That's what believing in God means. I don't just believe He's out there somewhere, but I'm actually pursuing Him. I'm actually following him. Just like when you tune in each week, you're saying, hey, I want to know more about this God. That's why I'm tuning in. Just like when you go to a church, you're not just sitting there checking it off your list. Oh, yep, yep. I showed, it's Sunday. It's nine o'clock. I, sh I showed up here to church so that way God will be happy with me. That's not a relationship. That's religion. God doesn't want us to have a religion. He wants us to have a relationship with Him. And it's not just Sunday. It's every day. Every day we get to know Him. Every day we get to follow Him. Every day we get to trust Him more and more. And Jesus says, if you believe in God, believe also in me. And that's the second point. Jesus has all authority from God to make us these promises. And He's making us promises. We can stand on them. We can trust that as we go through the bank, through this life, we can take it to the bank that Jesus is in control and that he's leading us in the right direction. And the last two things, this is the part that's so amazing to me. He's not building you a tent in the yard to camp out in. He's not building you a lean-to or some temporary shelter. If you invite somebody over for the weekend, you don't build them a mansion to stay in for the weekend. He's saying, in my father's house are many mansions, and I go and I prepare a place in that mansion for you. Why? So you could just stay for a little while? No. You don't make that argument unless you're talking about eternity. That's why this life is so short and eternity is so long and why we need to put our trust in Jesus and follow him is because eternity is long and eternity separated from God is miserable and we want to be with God. That's the desire. That's the reason why we open up God's word is we're finding that road map and why would he say the where I go you know and the way you know unless he provided a road map. And that's the Bible. And a guide, that's the Holy Spirit. He's preparing a place. He's prepared a road map. And he's prepared a guide to help lead you on the way. And the way that you're going to know that all of this is true is when you start opening up that roadmap, you start following the plan and purpose that God has for your life. Go back. Um, I did um, a series on the Beatitudes, having a beautiful attitude in Matthew chapter 5. And it helps you get your mindset that God wants me to have a great attitude and he's made a way for me to have a great attitude, just like he's made a way for me to find heaven. 
And as you start walking in that beautiful attitude, as you start following that roadmap, as you start using the Holy Spirit as a guide, you become, you know that I, you know that you know. I know that I know that I know that everything that God has said is real because every time he proves it to me, I just get stronger and stronger in my faith. And that's what he wants you to do. He wants you to get stronger and stronger in your faith. As you start to walk in it, you get to become stronger and stronger in your faith. If you were going and playing in a video game tournament, would you spend hours learning every back door and every secret way through that video game? Or would you just say, oh, well, when I get there, I'll figure the video game out. No. If you were studying for a test and there's all this material that you've got to study, you'd want to read that material before you actually went and took the test to be assured that you'd pass the test. It's the same thing with God's Word. Don't just put it on the shelf and let it collect dust. It's meant to say something to you. It's meant to teach you something. It's meant to open doors in your life that you've never experienced before. Open it up. Let it open you up. Guys, if you're really hungry for more, if you really want to know more, you're going to have to open up God's Word. Coming to a church doesn't make you a Christian. Opening up God's word and following Jesus with your whole heart. That's what makes you a Christian. We love you guys. We want to see you make it. We're going to get together soon. We're going to hang out. We're going to have a great time following God's word. But you have to be passionate. You have to be hungry. You have to want it too. We love you and we will see you soon.